Let me start by saying that hierarchical queries can be a little complex, depending on what you want or need to do. But if you understand the basics, you will be ahead of the average. Because unfortunately, many people, including some experienced developers, don't know or understand how to work with hierarchical queries in SQL. The goal of this part of the course is to teach you the basics of hierarchical queries. In this lesson, you will start learning about the hierarchical query clause, but before that, I'm going to show you an example of a very simple problem that involves hierarchical data and how you will solve it without using the hierarchical clause. For this example, I'm going to use the EMP table again. Let's suppose that my boss tells me to generate a report of all employees, which includes a column for the name of their direct manager. How will you solve it with the knowledge you have acquired so far? Let's see. This is my M table again. Let's suppose that what they asked me was to get the employees and the name of the department where they work. What should I do? Well, since what I have here is essentially the department ID, what I need to do is to join the department table by means of this ID, and then I can get the department name from the department table, right? So I need an inner join with the table where the name of the department is stored. Okay, in the current problem, the situation is practically the same. I have an employee ID here in the manager column, so I need to join the table where the names of the employees are stored, by means of this ID, right? And what is that table? Exactly, it is the M table, so I need to join my M table to my M table. And how is this type of join called? You know your stuff. They are called self-joins. So, one of the ways to solve this problem is by writing a self-join. Let's do it. Select e1.empno e1.ename and e1.job and now the name of the manager which will come from the second copy of the M table, so e2.ename. From the first copy of my M table, which will have an alias of e1. Join, and now my second copy of the M table, whose alias will be e2. And I'm going to join them on e1.manager equal to e2.empno. But since King doesn't have a manager, if I use an inner join, that row will not be included in the final result because King doesn't have a manager, and thus the join condition will not be met for him. So this has to be an outer join. And that's it. This is practically the same problem you solve in one of the practice tasks in the join section, remember? Okay. And now let's look at the hierarchical clause to see how it can help us solve this kind of problem. The hierarchical clause is composed of two main parts, the start with subclause and the connect by subclause. Do you remember that I mentioned in the previous lesson that we need a way to identify where the hierarchy starts? Well, that is what the start with subclause does. It allows us to define the beginning of the hierarchy or the root of the tree, as we saw in the previous lesson. And what we have to provide is a condition, which when true will identify the start of the hierarchy. Let's start writing our query. Select empno, ename, job, from emp. And now I will define the start of the hierarchy. So, start with... And the condition for the beginning of the hierarchy is that the manager column is null, remember? Because that means that that employee doesn't have a manager, so he or she is at the top of the hierarchy. So, start with manager is null. And now we need to define how the rows are related to each other, or how the parent-child relationship works. And that is where the connect by subclass will help us. And it takes a condition to define the hierarchy as well. Let's look at the hierarchy tree of this table again. This is the root of the tree, or the start of the hierarchy, which we already defined in our query. 
Now, the tree is traversing levels, as you might remember. The root is level 1. These are level 2. This level 3. And this level 4. And what we need to define is how the rows in one level are related to the rows in the previous level, right? Or in other words, we need to define how Adams relates to Scott. And how Scott relates to Jones. And how Jones relates to King. And for that, Oracle provides the prior operator, which gives us access to the row in the prior level. Or in other words, it gives us access to the parent row. So, if I'm at level 4 looking at Adams, the prior operator will give me access to the prior level, which is level 3, which in this case will be the row for Scott. And we will use this to define the relationship between the levels. So in this case, I will write the condition in my connect by subclass this way. Connect by manager equal to prior empno. This means that the number I have in my manager column must be equal to the empno column in the previous level. So for example, if I look at the row for Jones, the number I have in the manager column will be the empno of King, which if we see at the data is exactly the case. And that is how I know that King is the parent of Jones. Okay, that is all I need to build my hierarchical query. I just have to define where the hierarchy starts and how the rows are related to each other to build the hierarchy. But in my query, I'm currently returning only these columns, but I have to return the name of the manager as well. So how can I do that? As you remember, the prior operator gives me access to the previous level. So if I want to return the name of the manager for each employee, I need the ename column of the previous level, right? Or in other words, the ename column of the parent row. So I just need to add prior ename to the select list, and I'm done. Let's run it to see if I'm telling you the truth. To compare the results of this query to the ones we got with the self-join approach, I will add an order by clause to both queries. So let's add order by mno here and here, and I'm going to run them again. As you see, the results are exactly the same. So, what are the benefits of doing it using a hierarchical query? Well, in this particular case, the main benefit is that we are only reading data from the M table once, whereas in the other approach, we query the table twice by doing the self-join. But this is actually the simplest problem we can solve with hierarchical data, and doing it with a self-join was relatively easy. But if instead of just wanting the name of the direct manager, I wanted to return the name of the root of the hierarchy, or do some other things that involve other levels besides the previous one. Doing that without using the hierarchical clause could be really complicated and inefficient. To finish this lesson, you need to know that if your hierarchical data is incorrect, your query could fail because of it. I'm going to show you with an example. In this case, I'm going to modify my query to start the hierarchy with Jones. So I'm going to copy this query and modify the start with clause so that it starts with mno 7566. We can see now that Jones doesn't have a manager, and that is because we are starting the hierarchy at him, so anyone above him is not included in the data returned by this query. But now I'm going to make a change here. I'm going to modify the data so that Jones' manager is now a Smith. And now I'm going to run my query again. As you can see, I get an error now. Why? If we look at the data before the change, we can see that Smith manager is Ford, and Ford's manager is Jones. So Smith is below Jones in the hierarchy. But now, with this change, 
I'm setting Smith as Jones manager. So Smith will now be below Jones, but also above him, which doesn't make sense. In other words, I created a loop in the hierarchy, and that is why I get an error in my hierarchical query. So what can I do? Well, if fixing the data is not possible for any reason, then Oracle allows me to use the no cycle parameter in the connect by subclass to tell it not to raise an error when a loop exists in the data. So I will let it here, and I'm going to run it again. And voila, it now runs without errors. Okay, now you know the basics of hierarchical queries, and you are ready for your first hierarchical task. When you finish it, please continue to the next lesson, where you will learn about more interesting things you can do with hierarchical data. I will see you there.